Howdy, and welcome to another exciting episode of Coob Tube. We're here in the garage. Uh, first time, first video in the garage. Let's uh, let's get some lights on. That's better. So many things to work on today. Uh, we got a little a little bit of everything. Uh, let's take a let's take a tour. Wow! All right, so uh, parts washer is looking extra grody. Let's uh, let's take a look at this. Parts washer has been a real champ. Uh, kind of the savior of the shop here, but. With all the washing we've been doing to motorcycle parts, uh, not looking great. Not looking great. Uh, so we've got a couple buckets of oil eater here. I uh, got some more, uh, more in how. Uh, we've got some new, new filter media here. I've got uh, new filters for this guy, and I've got some filter bags from Zep, not a sponsor. Uh, probably ought to. Tidy up this area here, uh, looking a bit of a mess from the last time we did some work in here, which was uh, getting all the paint off of the old gas tank. Um, so that's looking good. Um, half half sandblasting, half grinder slash whatever, uh, whatever we could throw at it. Uh, we've got some uh, Severe Gear 75W90. Um, lubricant there for the front and rear diff on how uh probably hasn't been changed uh at least since i've had it so we'll get uh, we'll get that underway uh here we have the stripped frame for maid marion uh getting some uh getting some rust in there uh had it sandblasted probably a couple months ago um and uh just haven't had time to get it into the shop to get painted Still waiting on my bigger teardown table. Uh, that way we can kind of get this broken apart and cleaned up uh, pretty well. Sandblast cabinet is uh, really chugging along. This vacuum here is a beast. Uh, or the dust collector here um, really sucks the gloves through. Uh, made a few modifications to the side over here. Got its own uh, regulator. So we're getting 90 PSI in here at all times. Uh, so we can just take air from uh, the hose reel, bring it over to here, hook it in here, and then um, a couple other modifications we've made. Oh, look, we've got uh, some shock shock parts in there. Uh, got some LED fixtures from Amazon. Uh, those work like a champ. Uh, really, really brings a lot of good light in there. Uh, last time I was in the shop, I replaced the plastic screen up here uh, way easier to see inside there got a ton of organizers to do some organizing um, oh man oh well, <laughs> the main reason for uh, for today's trip uh, Hal just had the transmission rebuilt uh, a couple hundred miles ago uh, maybe 100 150 or so uh, but now now he's got a he's got a little power steering problem um, and he's not he's not too happy about it. So had a power steering for power steering problem for I don't know maybe a year, year or two, maybe three. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at what uh, what that looks like. Oh, don't want to pay those copyright fees. Set you up right here, and you can just watch and listen to this puppy purr.
yeah, so we got a little uh, screechy McScreechers in there. Uh, so probably want to get that sorted out. Um, other than that, she's looking pretty good in here. Uh, obviously could use a, a deep, deep cleaning, but uh, that'll be another project for another time. Loving this cold air uh, induction here. This thing works great. Uh, you can tell, I can really tell, drop the temperatures a little bit. Uh, also give it a little more kick, so that's great. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess let's get things uh, tidied up and we'll, uh, we'll carry on with the, uh, with the list here. And cue the montage. maybe tuck back there uh, that way we can pull Al in and, and get some get some truck work done Attention. Pitman shaft moving right to the top. Okay. That sounds fine. Says this should take less than two hours. That's comforting. Another set of instructions. They're the same. A 
believe this goes in like this. Obviously some sort of line comes into here. It would have been great if they had a little cap on it. Then a line here, steering shaft, pitman arm. All right, that was promising. Straight from GM. Stainless steel, shiny butte. All right, we've got a few lines here. This is where your uh, thing attaches to there. Ooh. She's got a whole fluid in her. It's a little suspect, but I guess that's so she don't dry out. All right. Let's, uh, let's get to it. Jobs like this, I'd love to have a massive drip pan. You just slide it under, let her drip away. That way you're not ruining your floor. Like 40. 40 bucks on uh, on the interwebs. Link in the description down below. blocking the damn garage and that's that's what we're gonna do so let's let's get to that all right small change of plans uh looks like we're gonna need uh based on the leakage we have here in the truck possibly the hydro boost um i just kind of i don't want to goof around with this anymore and uh it's it's pretty leaky in there so I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll get another hydro boost. Um, and then also kind of looking into it. Um, if we get, if we can get that, Ooh, yeah, there we go. Uh, some leaking from the, the cooler return lines. So I think what I'll do is I'll just get, uh, a new power steering cooler, uh, a new power steering cooler, new hydro boost, uh, and just, do it all at once and not have to futz around anymore with this. Uh, I feel like that's the way to go. So, um, and I feel like having to clear out, uh, we, we saw, we saw the debacle trying to get the truck in here. Let's the next time we do this, let's get this cleared out here and maybe this kind of pushed back and into the corner. Uh, and then that way we can get the truck in here at a better angle. We'll do the diff fluid. We'll do the oil change. We'll do the, the power steering and the hydro boost. Um, and the uh, the gear, we'll just do it all at once. That way it's done. Um, so I guess all we have left for today is uh, we'll clean out the parts washer. So um, let's get it kind of jostled free here and uh, let's get working on that. All right, 
So we got this beautiful, beautiful little cart that it sits on. Got some uh, locked casters in the front and uh, just open casters in the rear here. Built a little wooden base for it. Uh, one of the best things you can do for uh, for items in your shop, especially if you have a small shop, you want to move things around, get that stuff on wheels. Uh, made a similar cart for the blast cabinet here. Again, lockers in the front, uh, open wheels in the back. It makes it super easy to move stuff around. Um, super easy if you want to clean through here. Uh, so let's take a look at what we've got to, uh, what we've got to do here. So the cabinet is a 40 gallon cabinet and um, it needs 24 gallons to operate. And then I kind of fudge a, a few extra on there. So if we look at the calculator here, so let's call it 30 gallons. It's a four to, let's call that a three to one ratio. Um, so we need seven and a half gallons of concentrate and 22 and a half gallons of water. So, um, you know, call it, seven eight gallons uh let's call it what happens if we do seven gallons here 28 i think that's fine we'll do seven gallons of concentrate 21 gallons of water uh, and we'll uh we'll get this nasty water out of here we'll swap out this filter um looks like these hoses yeah they got a little bit left in them um so let's uh let's get that off all right, I got a nice big bucket. I've got uh, some heavy rubber gloves for chemical stuff. Uh, we'll put those on. You don't want to get this on your hands. Uh, this oil eater eats oil uh, by, by name. Uh, great and terrible part about that is great for cleaning parts. Also, uh, your hands just naturally have oil in them. Um, and so what it's going to do is it's going to eat all of the oil out of your hands and your hands are going to feel like the Crypt Keeper. Not a good feeling. Spin this guy off here. This cleans up great with water, so um, we'll just give it a spray when we're done here. But uh, let's take a look at that filter. Just really, really nasty there. Just, I mean, gobs of oil, and grease. Uh, yeah, so it's doing its job, which is great. Uh, but we got a new filter coming in, so we'll uh, we'll put that to work. All right, and we're back. I uh, got a little lunch. I uh, got some hose accessories. Uh, we kind of accidentally broke the neighbor's hose head, so uh, so now we got that uh, get that replaced. Uh, so back to. Back to the parts washer. So we've uh, sustainably uh, dumped all of the oil eater uh, dirt muck. Uh, let's uh, let's run the shop back through here and see if we can get the rest of this, and then we'll give it a rinse. <laughs> some of that water drain out the bottom uh, that way we can kind of flush that drain out that 
drain a little bit. We'll probably get to grab the shop back again. Man, this thing sucks. and roll. It is odd that uh, there's these little abrasions here. Uh, yeah, there you go. There. There. Uh, just those two, really. And then this one is right where the drain is. These two down here uh, is right where the leg comes into the parts washer. A little odd. Let's see if we can give it a little spray here. A little cleanup spray. This is my favorite cleaner here. Uh, this is VP Bike Wash. It smells delicious. Uh, works really well. Uh, dilutes pretty good. I go 4 ounces to 28 ounces in a 32 ounce Zep spray bottle here. Um, this is way more than you would ever need to clean anything. Um, so we're good there. It's your uh, regular abrasive, uh, medium abrasive scrubber brush guy. Just give it a little scrubby scrub. Shouldn't be too much grime on the top here. One thing I did notice is uh, pretty much all the hardware on here looks like it's pretty corroded. Um, I wonder if that's due to the parts wash chemical I'm using. Um, it's water-based, it's aqueous, um, which this part washer calls for, as opposed to your uh, like, um, gasoline-based or whatever, like kerosene or other cleaners like that. Around here. Scrubby scrub. Good, hurry. Time for a rinse. I think we're gonna go shower here. Get a nice rinse. Like we're getting a full, full pressure kind of out of the hose here. How do you drain hose? So I think we're doing, doing pretty good there. All right, let's get it back inside and uh, concoct the Phillips situation. All right, we got our uh, got our locked in place here. Make sure we come down here and set the valve to lock. All right, we'll tuck away our drain hose here. Still gotta put our filter on, let's not forget about that. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at the filter. So we've got this big canister here. We'll give it a rinse real quick. Rinse cam! Perfect. And we've got the uh, O-ring and a filter here. This is, uh, here's the filter part number. A-O-P-W 
10179 oil eater parts washer replacement filter single unit hungry to clean so hungry all right uh, very carefully slide our o-ring onto the parts washer here very carefully slide our o-ring onto the parts washer here there we go nice and tight along the top there we go all the clicks pop open our filter tell you what we'll uh we'll compare we'll compare the two there's our old filter and our new filter big difference big difference so i mean you can kind of see the chunks of oil in the thing so we'll bring that in here we'll drop it in the middle actually i think we can probably stick it on that guy there nope drop it in the middle ah uh, yeah if you see there's a little kind of hole down there that fits into this plastic guy so just drop that should center up oh man you couldn't have a better angle for this action all right so we have the filter in there we're just gonna kind of screw it on Making sure that that middle part there, there we go. <clears throat> and then, uh, cause I'm a little OCD. Uh, put a piece of tape on there with the date. Filter changed. All right, let's look inside the belly of the beast. All right, step one, uh, we've got the filter for the door. Wherever the door went, the front cover of the pump, le pump. All right, so we've got the door that sits on the front of the pump and we've got a little screen cover guy that uh, sits down on top of that. Uh, previously, there was a kind of a cloth type filter that fit in here. Um, I've seen guys use Scotch-Brite, Brillo pad, um, kind of a little bit of, little bit of everything. Uh, we are going to use some Merv 13 uh, air filter We'll see how that spares out. Again, I just picked this up on Amazon. Big old sheet of it. I think we could probably uh, cut a strip, fold it back and forth a few times. This seems like pretty, pretty good, uh, pretty good fabric here. So let's uh, let's measure this out and see how many how many squares we can get. All right, looks like we're three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Nice. Oh, could we have gotten any more perfect? Look at that. Now we will. Slide this onto here. Look at that nice clean filter. Pop this onto here. All right. And 
uh, while I had lunch, I decided we're going to go four to one on this mixture. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, so if we go four to one, uh, four to one, so five gallons of concentrate, 20 gallons of water. Easy peasy. All right, let's look at uh, some bucket math here. My empty gallon mix and measure bucket. So, gotten a little, little bit of shaking there. But once that settles out, I think that's probably about three gallons. Kind of looking like three gallons. So, this is a one to one straight at three gallons. Um, and we are looking for uh, how many gallons did we say here? We're looking for five gallons, so we'll use uh, two of our single gallons over there. And then we'll do 20 gallons of water. So let's uh, let us begin. Because I've uh, had this before, I know that once the water gets up to here, we're good. Uh, in actuality, uh, Eastwood really says you only need to get the water up to here. That's the 24 gallon working capacity. So that the, uh, the pump is covered in water at all times or covered in fluid at all times. So once we get up to there, we'll, uh, we'll switch the pump on probably have a little bit of crusties in the hose but not not too many um and uh we'll go from there so here's a uh soap filling time lapse There we go. Let's uh, turn the pump on and see what we got. A little air in the pump there. A little bit of, little bit of grunge. I think that's just kind of what was in the pump, what was in the lines. shelf in um, and then a thing we can do with that shelf is we can put this zip bag this filter bag um, and I think they they kind of mean for it to, to sit down in here um, but it fits there pretty well and then there's a rubber hose guy so they give you this rubber hose that um, attaches to the little spade on the end of here a little barb And then uh, they say where you would normally hook up your brush. So where you would normally hook up your brush, the filter bag has a uh, connection for that. So then you just hook it up and I believe that just kind of forces the liquid through this bag and you can see the bag's getting soaked. Mm -hmm. 
there's a bunch of dry clay type media in here um, that works as a real real good filter um, so we'll let this go until it gets uh, gets soaked and they say you can just kind of leave that in there and uh, leave it in for four or eight hours and it will uh, filter filter your fluid clean out your fluid real well so I've seen a lot of people use it for like a deep clean to try and get that uh, kind of dark brown black sludge water uh, clean it out and, and clear it up a bit um, but we'll just kind of set it on here let it run overnight see how she see how she goes um, and uh, see if we can get a little more clarity out of that filter not a big deal but um, fine nonetheless um, so that's it so we'll uh, we'll check back in on this later uh, parts cleaner is all cleaned up you can see it's starting to eke out the bottom here you take a look you kind of see it's starting to pour out and flow towards the uh, flow towards the low side of the tank see so it collecting some bubbles there so there we go on the uh, the zep filter bag uh, and a flush of the Eastwood 40 gallon parts washer so close that up we'll uh, tidy up a few things here get our buckets back uh, back where they oop, uh, back where they go Another productive day in the shop. Thanks for joining me. Um, next time, I'll see you. Uh, we'll be doing the hydro booster, the power steering pump, and uh, the power steering gear for HAL 2007 GMC Sierra 2500 HD Classic. Uh, we've also I've also learned through my scan tool that we've got a couple speakers that aren't hooked up, and um, the door cards are a little rattly so um, i had to replace some switches there so we're going to see if we have some good solutions for that uh until next time thanks for joining me on kube tube we'll see you